Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to continue on my previous video where I downloaded leads from Appify. And what I'm going to do today is just bring those leads into make.com, which is an automation platform. And then I'm going to use the columns that I need and put them into Google Sheets for easier access and yeah, just cleaner data. I'm going to start off by signing into my Make account. Make does offer a free starter option that gives you a certain amount of automations or runs. So you're welcome to create a free account if you don't have one already. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and say, create new scenario over here. And I'll call it, let's call it Legion Appify to Google Sheets. Okay, so what you want to do, we're going to start off with just creating a module that watches for the Appify actor that I'm going to run. So I'm going to take the watch actor run. I'm going to go create a webhook. If you haven't linked your mic account to your Appify account, then this is the place that you would do it. I'm going to watch for the Google Maps. There we go. Google Maps email extractor actor. I'm going to watch for that one and I'm just going to select it over here. Google Maps email extractor and then I'll save. So basically, what I have over here is just the webhook that is triggered once that actor has finished running. So I'm not going to run this now because the actor is not running at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is go to Appify. And as I mentioned before, I did a quick introduction to Appify in my previous video. But Appify also offers a free account. I get $5 per month free usage. You have different pricing models for the actors in Appify. So some of them you pay per usage only. Some of them you have monthly subscription fee plus the usage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the Google Maps email extractor. You can go to the Appify store and you can type in Google Maps email extractor over here. And you will find the actor. You will see that this actor costs 0 0.009 cents per result. So you can get pretty far with $5. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the actor. I'm just first going to set up all the search terms for this actor. I'll run it for, say, let's see, so dentists and maybe I will do, and let's leave it at chiropractor for now. That's fine. I'm going to say I want five places per search terms just for the sake of the video so it doesn't take too long. And then just in terms of the rest of my search items, like I mentioned before, I try to go with companies that have a minimum star rating of four plus, that have a website, and I skip the closed places, right? So this is already set. So I have this all set up. Before I run this scraper, I'm actually going to go back to Mike, and I'm just going to run that file module so that it's in the background waiting for the scraper to bring data through. I'm going to say run this module. And you'll see it's going as it's waiting. I'm going to start the scraper. And there we go. So the actor's running. We're waiting for 10 results to come through. You can see over there. Zero results, 10 seconds. We'll just give it a moment. See what happens here. There we go. We already have five coming through. Let's wait for some more. Once the 10 have come through, that's it. That was about 35 seconds. You can see over here that the export pattern is green. If you go back to make, you can see that the module has run successfully. Over here it says succeeded. What we're interested over here is the default data set ID. We can't see the information over here yet. This is just bringing in the ID that contains all the information. So what we need to do now is we need to add another Appify module, which will be get data set items. Over here, we're going to go and select the data set. What we can do, we can do in the search, we can just go data set. So we want the default data set ID, which is then going to bring in, there we go. Just going to bring in the information from the data set. And then we want to check here, clean is fine, Jason's fine. I'll keep the limit to 100. We know that we're only bringing in 10 leads, but of course, if you're running Appify 
for a thousand knees, you're going to increase in the middle of the year. So I'll save it. And then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to run the full scenario again because the actor has already run. So I'm just going to quickly take the default data set ID, copy it. And when I say run this module only, I'm just going to put that default data set ID in there and I'll OK it. And what happens is you can see over here, the 10 connections, which contain all the information for each of the leads that came through with the scraper, right? That's great. Now we theoretically just want to take this to Google Sheets. What I also did find was that some of the companies on their business profile, they don't necessarily have their email address set up. I have an example here if I'm going to show you this Florida City Dental. If I look at their Google Maps business profile, there's no email address over here. But when I go to their website at the bottom, you can see that there is actually an email over there. It would be nice to not lose this lead that I got from the Google Maps scraper. If I just use the Google Maps scraper, then I'm not going to know that there is another email on their website. What I'm actually going to do over here is instead of just using the one scraper, I have another scraper that's called, let me just get there. It's called the contact detail scraper. And basically what this one does is you'll see that it's also a paper usage model. Basically how this scraper works is you put the URL in of the website that you're trying to get the email addresses for, and then that scrapes the website itself. What the previous scraper does is it scrapes Google Maps. This one scrapes the actual website. Of course, we don't want to have to go and add each and every website URL in here. This one doesn't have an option where you can add more than one website. So I should show you over here. When you go here to JSON, you can see the format, the JSON format that you need to run the scraper in, all the information that's needed to pass into the scraper. I'm going to copy this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run this scraper from Mike. I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go add another module and I'm going to say run an app. And which actor do I want to run? I actually want to run the contact detail scraper. Run synchronously. It says here the scenario will wait until the actor run is finished, which probably what you want. The reason why you would say no is if you have so much data coming through that your Mac.com scenario is going to time out. But in this instance, it won't time out with just 10 lines. So I'm just going to put that there. And then for the input JSON, that's the information that's needed to run it. I'm going to go and copy the JSON code that I got from the scraper itself. But instead of just running it for this one website, I'm actually going to put the website that I got from the first scraper, which is over here. I'm going to take the website. This is going to run then every single time for every line that comes through from that there. That's what I want over there. and then. These I'm going to leave as is and I'm going to save it. So I'm going to run the actors. Now, what I want to do is I do want to run this actor before I add the next module, because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the default data set ID that I want from this module. I'm actually going to go and have a quick look at one of the websites over here. And let's take this one and put that in as a example of what I want to run this module for. I'm going to say run this module, I'm going to put the website in there, I'm going to say OK. And what's going to happen is it's actually going to run the scrape there from here. You can see over there, there's one bold and it succeeded. What we want to do is and just have a quick look. So it succeeded, right? And it, once again, we're interested in the default data set ID. So that's the field that we want to put into our new module so we can get the information from there. I'm going to go Actify again. And I'm going to say get data set items. And the data set items that we want to get now is from the run and actor, which is going to be just find a default data set ID. You can also see, so now I didn't say for it. Just check here. These are all fine. You can also see when you are here. I'm going to move it this way. When you hover over it, you can see the module that moves is the one that you're actually getting the information from. I know that I'm getting the right default data set from the second actor, which is the contact detail scraper. I'm going to save that. What I want now is actually, I'm just going to run this. So let's get this default data set ID as an example. I'm going to say run and I'm just going to put 
that in there. So, okay, there's no emails on that website, unfortunately, but at least we know that the module ran successfully. I'm just going to save this. Finally, what we want to do is we just want to actually add all of this to a Google Sheet. What I have done is I've created a Google Sheet, which I called the lead list. And I put in here the information that I would potentially want from the data coming from the scraper. What I have is I have company name. I have the category name, whether it's HVAC or dentist or whatever it might be. I have website address, city, postal code, country code. And then I have two columns. The one is emails from maps because I want to see what the email addresses are, what's coming from the maps scraper. And then I have emails from website, which is the emails coming through from the website scraper. I just added these because there could potentially be more emails coming from either one. And then I might just want to either in Mac or in Google Sheets, I might want to split them out. Facebook, Instagram, the handles, if it's available, location, not really necessary, but the information is there. I might just map it in. The phone number, review score, and reviews count. So this is my lead list. I'll go back to Mac. And what I will do is I will add a Google Sheet module and I'll say add a row. What I want to do is connect this to my Google Sheets account and then map to where my sheet is, right? So it's mag.com. That's lead magnet to email prospect. Actually, it's not really this one. It's maps scraper to email and email enrichment and then you have the lead list over here. Now what you'll see is you'll see the so it's sheet one, which you can see over there, sheet one. Now you can basically say, yes, the table contains headers. And I'm just going to map the values coming from both the get data set items modules from Appify to my Google Sheets. First of all, I'm just going to go to the very first get data set items, which is this one. It's of course also good practice to rename these. It's easier to then see which modules you're looking at. The company name, I'll just go title, map the title category name. I'll map this one, which is my chiropractor website. I will go down and find the website's address is over there, city, coastal code, country code. There we go. And then the emails from this map scraper, which is this one, I'm just going to go down. You can see over there, it's an array. Let's see what's coming through there. So I'll just do the whole array. And then this one, I'm going to take it from the different module. And this one's going to leave open. And then Facebook, let's see what they have over here. There's a Facebook feel. There is Instagram. There is LinkedIn. And then location. I think I saw the location up here somewhere. There we go. So latitude and the longitude, longitude. Of course, this might not even be necessary. The phone unformatted. Review score. Let me just type in top here. Score. Okay, there we go. We have total score and we have the reviews count. Right, so that's what I have. And then I'm just going to quickly go back to the emails from website because what I want to do is I want to get that from the different module. I'm going to go back to this one, which is the second one that pulls from the contact detail scraper. And I am going to put in over here, I'm going to put in the emails. Okay. I'm pretty happy with what I have over here. Just scroll down. Quick look what I have. And I think this is fine. I'm just going to save it. I'm just going to say this. Now I want to run this again, but because I have already run that, what I'm going to do just for the purposes of testing this is I'm going to unlink over here. I'm going to drag the scheduler to the second one so that I know that this is the first one in the link. And then I just have to quickly check what is the default data set ID because I can't use this one now because this one links back to the first module. I'm actually just going to save. It's going to complain, but I'm going to save it anyway. Then I'm going to go back. It's called lead gen fight sheets. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the previous executions that I know were executed successfully. 
I'll go back to the first one and then I will find over here. This was the very first execution that succeeded. I'll type this default data set ID. This will give me all the information that I'm looking for. I'm going to go back diagram and I'm going to go back in here. Go ahead, change the default data set ID. I'll put in the hard coded code and I will save it. Now when I run this, it's going to be as if it's coming from the scraper without the scraper actually running because it's already run. Let's see what happens. I'm going to run once. So there we go. I have one run over there and then over here. This is going to run the app for however many leads I get from the first scraper. We know that we're doing 10. We got 10 from the first scraper. If we go back to the actors and we check out this one, you can see the last run, we got 10, right? <clears throat> for the good contact detail scraper, you can only add one URL. It does one run for every one lead. You can see over here that it's doing 10. What we'll see is if we go to Google Sheets, let's actually go here. We'll see all our information. What Mike do, does do is it copies the format of the very first line. We'll just reset the formatting so it's a little bit more readable and user friendly. There we go. Now, instead of having our scraped leads sitting within Appify and having to download it, I don't know if you watched my previous video, but you can see if we go over here. We can look at the last run and we'll basically see that you have to export it. And then once you export it, you can get it into Excel or HTML or CSV. And then you can go into Google Sheets or Airtable and format it. But this is very clean. You have your company name, your category name, the website, address. And now we'll see what's happening over here. So we can see actually from the 10 leads that are downloaded that none of them had emails coming from the website, which is interesting. Before, when I did the lead gen, I found that a lot of them didn't have emails coming from Google Maps and many of them had emails coming from the website. With this sample data of 10 leads, this is not the case. So if you have your lead list all contained within Google Sheets, you can potentially even go further in Mike and do filter on your list and take all the ones that come through with an email address and send an automated email out to them where you specify what the body of the email is. Should you want to go back to mike.com? And so when I was testing the scenario, you'll remember that I had this hard coded, but what I've now done is I've reconnected the first module to the get data suit items and after the reconnect, I removed the hard coded part and I added the default data set ID variable in there so that that can be used coming through from Appify. And there you have your entire Mike automation, very easy, straightforward, and very helpful to bring in leads and clean them up and have them all ready for you to use however you want. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's any other information that you would want about Mike, about lead generation, any automations that you're interested in, drop a comment and I'll be sure to look at it. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe to my channel.